What's going on guys? Welcome back to Classic Octane. I am Taylor. Today we are going to knock out a quick project on the KLR650. I'm still waiting on parts for the R100GS, so that will be coming very soon. Uh, like 80% of the parts I ordered are already here. Also waiting on another part for the Hardtail Triumph. You guys will see that again uh, once that part gets here as well. So I've actually decided to make a little bit of room in the garage. I'm actually going to sell the KLR. I enjoyed it, but I've actually already replaced it to be completely honest. Uh, and I'll show you guys that bike very soon. But before I sell it, I wanna make sure the bike is 100% good to go. And we have one little pesky problem the bike has had since I got it. I wanna walk you guys through how to fix it for free. So the issue this bike has is the tripometer doesn't work. So it's that little gauge right here. It's the one you're supposed to be able to hit this button and reset. The reason why that's so important is because this bike doesn't have a fuel gauge. So that's actually the easiest way to keep track of roughly how much fuel you have in your gas tank. You know, you can figure out your average mileage, know that, you know, when it gets to whatever, 175 miles, you should probably start looking for a gas station. If you can't reset it, uh, you know, it's pretty difficult to do that. So I'm going to show you guys how to pull this cluster out and repair it. To pull the cluster out, we're only actually going to need two tools. That's a five millimeter Allen and a small Phillips screwdriver. I actually don't know if this bike is JIS or if that's just more classic Japanese stuff. I know a standard Phillips will work on this bike, so we're gonna use that. Later on, I'm gonna uh, utilize a little bit longer Phillips, but I need this stubby one to get the gauge out. So in order to get the cluster out, we need to kind of semi remove the front fairing. To do that, we have a Phillips on the top of each side, so two of those. Then we have four five millimeter Allen bolts. There are two in these little recesses right here on either side of the cluster. The other two are down here. You can see it right there on the where my light's pointing at. There's a five millimeter there, a matching one under this side. We're gonna remove all six of those. And I'll show you the next step. Now that our six fasteners are out, what I also wanna do is go ahead and loosen up and pull through our left front turn signal. So you can see it down there. It's basically just threaded on the back. And what you can do is feed some of the wiring through and that will give you just a little bit of extra kind of wiggle room with this front fairing. What we're gonna do is kind of pull this side and what we're trying to do is go forward and around where this gauge cluster kind of mounts. So you can see we've kind of gone around there. work it and then we need to shift this side up and over just like that just plastic so don't go too crazy with it you can't break it We're just trying to get that much room right there now on the back side of this cluster there's a few things we need to disconnect there's a speedometer drive cable which just unscrews out of here You can just let that kind of hang down. There is a wiring connection, which you can kind of pull up a little bit to free it up. And then there's basically a little tab right here at the bottom. If you press that tab, you can wiggle the wiring connection out. And then now there's three Phillips screws. There's one right here on the left side and there's two on the right side directly on top of each other. So when you just go ahead and pull those three out. Now that those three screws are out, our cluster will just pull straight back and it's free. So we'll go over to the bench and work on it. Now that it's over on the bench, the first thing we're gonna do is remove these six outer Phillips screws, which will separate our gauge cluster from the plastic bezel around it. So we remove those six now we can lift straight up and our gauge will be separate from the bezel itself. Throw the bezel aside. Now we actually need to remove the gauge from this white plastic housing. So to do that, there are two Phillips right here in the middle and there are three Phillips on each side. The three on each side have wires connected to them. If you're careful, you don't have to kind of remember what orientation those go in because when you unscrew that, the kind of black piece on the inside will come straight out and those screws will just stay in place. If you do accidentally remove them, maybe take a picture or something like that so that you can remember what order they go back in. And 
Now that all eight screws are out, remember I'm gonna keep all of those in place. We should be able to, as long as none of them are still holding on, just like that. So I'm just gonna keep this nice and level again because I don't want any of those screws to come out. And here is the piece we're gonna be working on. So the problem we're fixing, this is the reset lever right here. So when you push this lever, it drops down this white plastic piece. And if you see down in there, there is a little lever arm right there that's supposed to be actuated by that movement. So you're supposed to be able to push this down. It makes that little lever turn and that's what resets your tripometer. It might be easier to see when I remove it, but that little arm has a flat spot on it now. So as I push down, it's just kind of jammed in there. It's not actually moving the way it's supposed to. So we need to remove that little arm and sand it to a nice smooth radius. To remove it, there's a tiny little C-clip on the side of it there. And I don't even know if you guys are gonna be able to see it, but there's a little C-clip right at the end of my screwdriver there. So what I'm gonna do is just get in there with a really small flathead, kind of pull that off, make sure it doesn't go flying across your shop somewhere, and then that little plastic arm will come right out. Here's the piece out. So I don't know if you can tell, but it's got that little bit of a flat spot right there. So what I'm gonna do now is just take a file or a piece of sandpaper and just kind of rub it along this edge until it's nice and smooth. The beauty of this is we can test it before we put it all back in the bike, just to make sure it's not jammed up. But that's what we're looking to get rid of is that little flat spot right on the edge there. What I'm doing is just taking my flat file, taking the little piece, just kind of rubbing it along the file and turning it at the same time so that we can keep that radius nice and smooth. It's not gonna take much. We can actually get in there and try it now. So I can stick it back on there. This piece is keyed. So if you look inside that little hole, there is a little tab that corresponds with a slot on that little post. Let's snake it back in here. Make sure our slot lines up just like that. And we don't even have to put the C-clip in just yet to test it. We can just push our button. Hey, how about that? You can see the mechanism is resetting now. And we're showing zero miles. That's it. So now I gotta be very careful with that little C-clip and get it back on there and then we can reinstall everything. I'm also gonna put a very small dab of white lithium grease just right on that little mating surface right there, just like that. I don't wanna coat this thing, but I just wanna Make sure it has some nice smooth action. The next owner is not gonna have to come in here and mess with it anytime soon. So I won't bore you with every single step of reassembly, but basically I did take out the three screws from this left side, just because they can be a little bit difficult to get lined up when they're in place. We can slide back in our main little unit here. Go ahead and start these right side screws. I don't want to tighten anything all the way down just yet. Then if we look down in these holes, we can kind of mess with it and you'll feel it kind of click into place. And we know that these guys are lined up as well. We'll tighten them all up. Installation went smooth. Don't forget to tighten up your left turn signal. We're gonna call that repair done. So I hit this button, you can actually hear it 
actuating now, so should be good to go. I'll probably ride the bike, put a couple miles on it, and then hit it just to you know make sure everything's working, all the electronics and the dash and everything is all hooked up properly. I mean, it's only one connection, but just to give it a good once over. And then I think this bike is gonna be good to go. So truth be told, it's probably the last time you guys will see it. That's gonna be it for this one. It was about 15 minutes total, which is my kind of repair. If you guys have any questions or anything, uh, do let me know in the comments below. I appreciate you guys watching as always, and I'll see you soon.